Hey everyone, Brett here with FTO Nerd Talk and uh, joining me this morning is Jamal Bilal. Um, he is a creative and has got Thank two you, comic Brett. books under his belt. Um, welcome, Jamal. Hi, hi, Brett. Good to hear so, you. Good um, to see you, man. Good to see you. So I've, I've read uh, your comics. Um, I gotta tell you, I liked them a lot, um, which is something you don't Thank always you. get in the indie comic world, um, <laughs> a comic that you like. Um, so especially two comics that you like. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself and what's your background. Um, just what do you want to share about yourself? All right. Um, well, I was born in Trinidad and Tobago and uh, moved to New York when I was a little young uh, with my family. And I've uh, been here for over 20 years, so like I'm a, I'm a New Yorker at heart, but with uh, the Caribbean roots that will never go away. Um, uh, my day job, I work in film and television, and I'm a post-production supervisor, so I've gotten to see how movies and, all are, and television is made, and it's also influenced uh, my work and how I approach it, so uh, like my entire world revolves around story. That's awesome. That's awesome. I could tell, um, I didn't know that what you did for, for your day job, but I could tell in reading your books um, that you had to have something there um, beyond just a guy who likes to read and write comic books. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So thank speaking you. of comic books, do you remember your first comic book? Well, yes. <laughs> I remember clearly it was a Wolverine issue. It's right after the Onslaught series. I think it was the Onslaught Impact. Um, Wolverine 105. And uh, I'm trying to remember the exact name of the book. I think it was Faces in the Fire. And it covered Wolverine after he had the adamantium sucked out of him. And he was trying, he was grappling with his humanity because he felt like more of a, a beast than a man. And Stick, Daredevil's mentor, helped him out and put him onto Elektra. It was one of the best books that I ever read, and I remember that so clearly. It's a great book. Um, <clears throat> that's awesome. So, yeah, that's my, first, that's my clearest memory of my first comic. Nice. I love hearing people's first memory um, because it's just so funny how different it all is, but how it affected, you know, re reading that first comic book, how it affected us all that are in this fandom. And it's, that's cool. Yeah. So what are you reading comics now? What are you reading? Well, uh, right now I've, I've become one of those guys that does the trade. Like I'm, I'm, I can't do single issues anymore. I'm like, it's like watching a single episode of a show. I'm a binger now. I'm like, <laughs> give me all the story and close it out right now. Uh, so the things I'm reading right now are Jason Aaron's Southern Bastards. I love that book. I think it's a brilliant book. Uh, Rick Remender's Deadly Class and the, the latest trade just came out. So I'm looking forward to reading that. And of course, Saga, um, Brian K. Vaughn got me back into comics with Why the Last Man and so, so I'll read anything that he puts down. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm, Saga is on my reading list currently too. So um, in Deadly Class, I want to add it to, to what I read next also. So very good. And uh, Image just pumps out really good books. They do. They do. So, um, what inspires you about comics? Um, what inspired you to create your own comic? Well, like I said earlier, um, I just, I love stories. I love telling stories. I mean, from when I was a kid, just living in my imagination to now, but specifically with comic books, the comic books are different from other mediums. And the reason I love it is because you get to live with the character as long as you want you control the pace as the reader there's there's no it's on the page it's in front of you and you can look at the details of the panel and extrapolate the emotions and analyze the thought and the feeling that the writer and the artist were trying to um convey to you and that is why i love comic books as a medium um, because i get to live in that moment as long as I want before I move on. So. That's, awesome. That's awesome. So um, 
what is I can probably guess um, based on what you've already said, but what is your favorite part of creating a comic book? Oh well, honestly, like yeah, it just brings it back, man. Like I love living in those moments. I love crafting those moments where the reader and me as the creator get to sit with the character and ponder like, oh, what are they feeling? What are they thinking? Um, how does it feel? Where are we going? Like, and then the what ifs, like ha- one of the greatest things about comic books too is like you get to do the what ifs all the time. Yeah. And because you have characters in front of you, you just sit there and you're like, okay, what if they did this? Or what if they did that? You know, um, it's not, you, you get, and then you turn the page and you're like, oh, that's what they did. So, you know, it's, it's excellent that way. Uh, awesome. That's, that's, that's why I love creating them, to be honest with you. And man, the art is, the art and the medium is a beautiful thing. Like, yeah, yeah. I think, I think finally comic art is getting its recognition to, for, for what it is slowly. <laughs> I dig it. And um, I could go in a total rant about how I, how, what I think the, the, of how the comic book medium is treated mm-hmm. uh, currently, but I'll save that for later. <laughs> it sounds good. Sounds good. Um, so Half Breeds, I see it there in the background. Let's break it down. What's what's happened and what's next in Half Breeds? All right. So uh, Half Breeds is a urban fantasy height comic. All right. And um, it's uh, let's say it's like a modern Lord of the Rings meets Ocean's Eleven. And you're following this Danny Ocean before he was Danny Ocean. Um, but he's a half orc, half elf. So that that's that's the gist of it. And uh, there's a massive world that I built out around it. But I mean, I'd like to savor a little bit that of that for the the readers. If if we um you know if we get the band back together. So the goal right now is to sell as many books as possible, and then take those funds and make another book and keep this going as possible. That's awesome. And I'll say from having read it, I'm no spoilers, but you can tell that you have built out that whole world there, that there, there's these little um, hints along the way that this is a much bigger world that's been well thought out, well planned that this story is taking place in. So kudos to you, man, because it's, it's good. You. It left me wanting more. I was hoping you'd come on today and be like, issue two available next week, um, because <laughs> it, it got me, it hooked me. Um, it's really good. And I, I love the art style. So who is the artist and how did you all decide on the style of art? Cause it's really unique. I've not really seen much else like that in that style in the comic book world. So the art style, um, the artists are uh, Brendan Hebert, uh, who I found on Instagram. So I love Instagram, go Instagram. And Vicky Penzas, uh, who I worked with while I was at the effects producer. And she's one of the most talented VFX supervisors I've ever worked with and I saw her work and I was like I want you to color my comic like would you be interested and with Brendan Brendan he he colored my first comic okay and the reason why he colored my first comic is we saw his saw his stuff on Instagram we're like we want that kind of style but at the time Brendan didn't have um he had a couple of other projects, so we didn't have time to color the book. Mm-hmm. So I went to Vicky, and we all kind of collaborated and came up with this idea of like creating this watercolor um, treatment of the characters and of the world in order to make it beautiful and also kind of cost effective because we didn't want, we didn't have the, we kind of had the luxury of time, sorry. Mm-hmm. And, um, but we didn't want to spend all of it coloring the entire page. We wanted to make something unique and beautiful. And just just a little hint for the readers, if they they uh, they didn't already figure this out, each color kind of means something. Like it, it identifies a different class of uh, creature. Yeah, yeah, I, it's 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 awesome. Um, and it, it is like I said before, it's really unique. Um, and 
it, it adds to the story, which um, I like. I like when comic art adds to add something to the story. It's not just beautiful, but it adds to that world you're immersing yourself in and, and gives you something in the back of your head that you're not quite sure maybe what it is yet. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned you had a another comic before Half Breeds. So it was titled Ver. Um, any plans for that book to continue? Well, Ver currently lives on as a free digital download on my website, jamalbalal.com. And uh, currently the plans are for it to remain a free digital download. Um, originally, look, there was a plan to do a full graphic novel with Ver. Um, and I was working with Chris Lee, an amazing artist. If you, I mean, he, he, I think he could definitely rival Jim Lee once he gets to Jim Lee's age, but he's on his way, man. He's great. Uh, but Chris and I, we, we had different timelines and life just got busy, so we didn't complete the book. So right now it's living there, and maybe one day I'll get to revisit it and bring those characters to, to life and continue, continue that story. That's awesome. Well, if, you, if you're out there listening and you just want a great free read, head over to Jamal's website and download it because it is a great free read. Um, and again, kind of what's your appetite and left me wanting more. So I hope someday you guys come back around to it and, and do some more for it. Um, so as a writer, um, what appeals to you about storytelling via comics versus other medium? Well, uh, sort, of, sort of similar to what I was saying, the earlier about living with the characters mm -hmm. so in novels you you have to create everything in your imagination you, you you're piecing it together you're 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 looking for the texture by the words and it's all in your imagination and granted our imaginations are strong like they are the most powerful tools on the planet like you, you've tried the lemon test, right? Where you think of the lemon and then your mouth starts watering. Yep, yep. <laughs> so, but with that, once you stop reading, once you hit that, finish that paragraph, you have to bring all those words together in your imagination and create that. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you can kind of live in it, but it's not tangible. And then with movies and television, which I love truly, like my second love is movies, my third is TV. Um, they just keep moving like they're not waiting for you yeah. like the story is moving without you it's on a road it's on that you know train track and it's going and even when you pause it you interrupt it so it's like you have to rewatch it and rewatch it but with comic books when you open that book and you read that page you can get to the end like okay I'm going to go back I'm going to read this again I'm going to tear apart the layers of this particular scene. What's happening? What's his face? What's that look? What's his mouth doing? What's his thought bubble? And you can dissect it in such a way that you feel as though you understand the character and their motivation even deeper. And this is just my, my thoughts on you know, comic books and how they're meant to be read or analyzed. Uh, but maybe that's just me just geeking out a little too hard. Uh, but that's the reason why I love that medium. And then, you know, film and television, as I've directed and produced other things, it's, they also have their own special magic. But I really do love writing in comic books. Now. I love writing for that audience. Yeah, yeah I agree. I agree. I think you hit the nail on the head, my friend. <laughs> um, so I would say, and this is just my opinion, but I'd say you're part of a resurgence right now in black indie comic creators. Um, do you have any other indie titles in that genre that you're following? Well, I'll be honest with you. I just picked up this book and I'll, you know what? I'll pull it on screen since I figured yeah. why not. It's called... Uh, Black Comics Return. I love that. I was going to ask if you know John Jennings' work. <laughs> I legitimately found out about him and this book last week. Actually, maybe, yeah. I got the book last week, two weeks ago. And um, this really awesome uh, comic book writer, 
put me on to him and he was like, you should check this out and be introduced to all these uh, black comic creators. And now I have so much to do to research and like, I, there was a part of me that felt like a, a you know, a sea in the night, a ship, pardon me, a ship in the night, mm -hmm. lost at sea and I couldn't see anyone else mm -hmm. like making comic books that looked like me. Granted, you know, you're on Instagram, but they seem so distant. Like I met the creators of Black before and they are some dope dudes, like really cool. But it, it felt as though, oh, they've already they made this legendary book that will go down in history. Right. Like I, I am just a plebe trying to aspire. But now now to know that there's so many more of us and so many more in the minority creators whole knowledge just amazing yeah yeah uh, that, that's the only problem with john jennings work every book he puts out it adds to my reading list because he lists so many great <laughs> books in there that i just gotta go get them <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 definitely oh well that's awesome um what advice would you give to others maybe who are wanting to go into the industry would you tell them to go for it or has it been heartbreak for you <laughs> well i mean without the heartbreak like you don't know what you're missing, right? Yeah. Um, if I to the future generation, anyone that's just trying to that loves comic books and always wanted to do a comic book, I say do it. I have a fine art background. I know how to draw. Um, so there's that part of me that's like I can always yeah I could dig it up and try to draw draw a page. But even if you can't. Just try, reach out to somebody, create, create that connection because if you don't know, you'll regret. So I don't believe it's about breaking into the industry anymore. I, my idea is about, it's more fashioning a key to open the door that are around the, the moat or the castles of the industry. Again, I've heard, I heard that quote from someone fashioning the key and it just stuck with me. I'm like, yeah, it's go and make stuff. Keep making things because you've got to collect the skills in order to be regarded as someone that can work in this business. Like comic books and the film and television world are the only two industries where you have to do the job before they give you the job everything else like you have to get that experience level yeah yeah that's good advice man good advice so tell people where can they find half breeds where can they find your work at how how can they um get your book all right uh so half breeds is currently available in comicsology uh and i will be selling hard copies a limited edition amount a limited amount i should say signed and shipped to you in protective cases uh, on my website, uh, jamalbalal.com. And if, you're, uh, if your followers and the viewers want to follow me, they can find me at to the next level. That's T-W-O, the next level uh, on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, yeah, but just keep, keep up to date, reach out. I'm always down to chat about comic books and new material and to, yeah cool. always always here that's awesome so if you're out there watching this go over to comicology and download that book right now i think it's a uh, 3.99 on comicology is that right 3.99 on comicology yeah hey man that, that's that's a latte you go support an indie creator go download it right now all right jamal thank you so much for being with us today taking the time to chat and just hang out i really appreciate it no problem man it was a pleasure chatting with you and dude i, I like honestly I know everyone's going to say it at some point, but your room is the best. <laughs> it's taking uh, lots of rearranging and uh, time, but yeah, I, I, I'm, I like it too. <laughs> All right. Y'all have a good time. We'll see you next time.